God damn it. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Hey. <laughs> hey, good morning. Good How morning. How are you? Good, good. Um, we had a, we can get into it a little bit later if you want, but I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you later. I don't want to, I don't want to ruin anything. Okay. You want to um, save the magic? <laughs> I'll save the magic. <laughs> no, um, but I just, but, but first I just want to say thank you so much for doing this. This is awesome. Um, and I just pleasure. saw your, uh, your Instagram just now. <laughs> that was awesome. I was, I was trying to find a hat. I was like, oh my gosh, I got to take Gable to tennis and I got to find a beanie. I got to find something. <laughs> so you know what That's I found awesome. out? You can just use headphones. Yeah, that, that works. That works. Yeah. I was, uh, I was actually debating whether I've been like, so ever since I started getting into the stand up thing, I've been starting to like, see what, you know, see what these other comics are all about. They have like these weird rules, these clicks with the comics. You know what I mean? Like, really? oh, you shouldn't wear hats when you're on stage, or you shouldn't do this, or you should wear this kind of clothes. And, and I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna be me. Um, but I have been. Not, I mean, I'm a hat guy. I always wear hats. But the last few months, no more hats. I, I'm starting to evolve, I think. But um, I wear this one for the podcast because it says my podcast name. That's basically. I love it. I would like to buy some merch, please. <laughs> okay. I want some of that. Um, so, hey, I'm, I'm already rolling. This is how I do it. I like to just jump oh, into it, if that's okay. cool. I love um, it, yeah. I'll yeah. just do a short little intro. And mm -hmm. by the way, I, I'm so professional. I keep all of this in there because I like the real stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I think the intro is interesting, too. I mean, did I come in eating hot Doritos with a <laughs> mellow yellow and talking with my mouth full, right? It's yeah, it could have been. Could have been. been. <laughs> yeah, and it would have been acceptable. Oh, so, thank you, thank yeah. you. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Face the Truth. Um, I know it's been a few weeks since I've done this, but it's been Christmas and uh, I've been sick and family's been sick and there's been different things, but we're back and we're back in a big way. I'm super excited to have this guest this week. My microphone is being naughty. Uh, I'll fix it in a bit. But anyways, my guest this week is awesome. Um, I, I just went through and looked through a bunch of things just because I want to make sure I get get some of this right. Mm -hmm. But um, she's been in things. Um, I, the, the biggest one I think everyone knows and remembers is Parks and Rec, Jessica Wicks. Uh, but she's guest roles on TV shows like ER, Friends, Reno 911, Curvy Enthusiasm, which is like my favorite show. Everyone loves Raymond. Christopher Guest's Mascots, which I love everything Christopher Guest does, and Mascots was a great movie. Um, and recently, Sister Swap, the holiday movie, uh, my wife and I watched. Um, a few of those episodes, and that was Thank awesome. You. And um, so, anyways, this is a great pleasure. I love um, improv; is one of my favorite things to watch. Um, and she's amazing at it. She's a very talented actress, um, and one of the sweetest, nicest people I've ever met. This is the first time we meet in person, but it, online, yeah. Yeah. it's so great to meet. <laughs> so, everyone, please welcome Susan Yegley. My microphone is being very naughty. Um, you know, I think we can just turn the zoom off right now because that was the nicest intro and <laughs> I don't want to follow that. I'm just okay. so thrilled. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate this. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited too, because the whole thing about the whole reason I do this podcast is to talk with creative people, um, people that can inspire too. That's, a, that's an important thing. And I find you to be super inspiring and you're one of, you've, you've got an infectious uh, friendliness to you. Um, that isn't, I don't think, uh, normal. <laughs> you know I mean? like, I'm not used it's to heavy medication, being, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not used to people being so nice now. Just no, you're but, sweet. um, but I think it is infectious. And, um, we've talked, we've talked a few, you know, you know, just, privately online and you mm -hmm. always have such encouraging things to say and you're a very nice person so i appreciate it very much so just wanted Thank to you. let you know well i appreciate <laughs> your talent i am blown away by your genius actually i, I look at your <laughs> paintings and my head explodes thank you <laughs> well, i appreciate it i still crack up that you have that melania oh um... <laughs> oh yeah oh look look what i got right here 
Oh yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my gosh. I saw this. I saw that you painted Milani. I said, ah, that is such an incredible uh, <laughs> rendition of her that I had to put it over a mantle. So thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's how she looks to me. I can't help it. I mean, it's funny. Um, people, there's always mixed reactions when you do something political. I mean, that's mm -hmm. not even political to me. Like I was just, but you do both sides. You do Republicans yeah, and Democrats, right? Yeah. Exactly. I don't, I don't yeah. really. Yeah. But it, I just find it funny that how, how, um, I'm not like this. So I find it funny when people put politicians on such high pedestals where mm -hmm. like they, they, they idolize them so much so that when you draw them, it's like, Oh, like even when I did the Biden, uh, Kamala cover, Oh, I love um, that time magazine. I, yeah. And I, I wasn't, I wasn't, um, prepared for the, the, I, I was expecting people to be super excited, but then it was the opposite. I got so much like anger and stuff. So it, it's, kind, I find it kind of interesting. Like when I did that Melania, um, I love it that you loved it so much because I had so many people who are, you know, had opposite reaction to it. Like you're such a mean person. I'm like, what? Like, that's how she looks. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So do you do it where I know this is your podcast interviewing me, but I'm just dying yeah. to know when you see a face, let's say you're sitting at Applebee's restaurant and you look across the way and somebody has an incredible face. Is it one feature that you would go home and draw them and exaggerate like a, mm. a large pair of eyes or crazy hair? No, no, no. It's, it's everything. It's, it's, it's everything. All, okay. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Um, uh, I haven't been to an Applebee's by the way. I don't, I don't think ever. Well. <laughs> I'll but, probably go in a couple of months when they're all back open. <laughs> oh my gosh. So anyways, how have you been? How, how's things I've, been going? I've been really, really good. Um, just going through the washing machine that is life right now. You know, everything at six o'clock at night, the whole next day pivots. If things get canceled right now. Things are shuffling around. Oh, yeah. But uh, we did manage to go away for the holidays. So that was great. We went to uh, to Aspen and the boys, Kevin and Gable did some skiing. And I walked around looking for John Denver's grave at the John Denver Sanctuary. So I went for an hour and a half, just walking around this beautiful place in the snow, thinking this will be really nice. I'll go see his grave site. And um, I finally look around and there's nothing. And there's a visitor center. And I go in and this lady says to me, can I help you? I said, yeah, I'm looking for John Denver's grave. I just thought it'd be a nice thing to do. <laughs> to pay respect. And she said, Oh, honey, he was cremated. His ashes were put over the Pacific ocean years uh, ago. Yeah. Go, oh no. <laughs> my, my travel guide said I could come and, you know, pay respects here. So that was, uh, yeah, it was still beautiful. It's a beautiful <laughs> place to walk Aspen summer, winter, spring, fall. And you live uh, right next to the ocean. So you're kind of, yeah. you've been, you've been there the whole time. I've been dipping in you've Rocky been... mountain high. <laughs> Yeah. constantly <laughs> you've been in the, the john denver bliss without even knowing without even like, knowing i've been bathing yeah. in him yeah yeah, That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, i saw i saw some yeah. that looked like really really an amazing time that the uh skiing it was i'm surprised um I, kevin's brave that's brave i yeah I, I'm, I, I'm like i used to go downhill skiing um but now i'm like there's no way i would ever do it again just because I'm too worried. I'm going to like break my hand, you know, cause I need to draw and stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I've noticed the older I'm getting, the more I'm cautious about doing, I never used to care about it. I would, I went yeah. skydiving, swing with sharks. Um, I, the, the craziest I would just, yes, let's do it. I want to do it. I'm, I'm game. And now I'm kind of like, mm. like I turned down a trip to France recently because I just didn't feel like the hassle to go to <laughs> Like, really? I'm serious. Like, I was like, I don't, you're not going to go to the airport and all that yeah, stuff. And I was then like, customs uh. and a passport and, and yeah, euros. And, 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 and now they're like, if, if they, they swab you and even if you don't have COVID, but they, they're suspicious, like maybe you don't, maybe something else that could hold you for two weeks. And, and then I got it. Then there's, a, I have to take three trains to get, I was just like, yeah, I don't feel like going. <laughs> no, that's honest. I think yeah. we're cut from the same cloth, Jason, because yeah. I, I don't do physical risks. I'll do emotional ones. You know, mm. I'll go and if somebody breaks up with someone, I'll be right there holding your hand with yeah. a latte and we'll talk it <laughs> through for four hours, right? I'll yeah. talk emotions and feelings. I'm real comfortable in that lane, but physical stuff, like I've never broken a bone. You know why? Because oh. <laughs> I don't do anything that will require you to break something. I don't uh. ski. I don't sport. 
Uh, yeah. So, so you just watch the skiing and, and I'm a big ski cheerleader. I'm, yeah. I'm what they call skiing adjacent. So I'm just like, yeah. yay, everybody. <laughs> and I watch them, watch them put on their thermals and then their shiny pants. And then they put on the puffy pants on top of the shiny and the thermal and the stuff and the gear and the skis and the warmers and the stuff and the first aid kit. And I say, Kev, I don't want ever to do anything that requires gauze. I don't want to have to bring gauze and neosporin <laughs> to anything. Right. Yeah. But they had the, all the packs and the stuff but they have a great time, but it's just not for me. And I think the <laughs> joy for me of being older is saying, you know what, this is my lane. And I feel so comfortable in yeah. doing what I love doing. And I find life right now challenging enough. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm taking enough risks just by getting up in the morning. I feel yeah. <laughs> I don't need to go in and ski or, you know, to your point, jumping out of an airplane, all that. I'm, I just yeah. want to kind of just, get yeah, I'm glad I did that. I'm glad I did it because it was amazing, but I won't do it again. And and it's interesting too, because, you know, so I, I noticed, uh, I think when I talked with Kevin um, a couple years ago, I think your son and my daughter are the exact same age, uh, 2007, January, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. 14, yeah, same, 15. Yeah. So she just turned 15 uh, well, last Monday, I think. Um, but so I have two teenage daughters, an 18 year old and a 15 year old. Wow. And, um, and I didn't know what I was doing when they were born. Like I had no idea what I was doing. I still don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> but like now I've got a four year old and a one year old and it's, it's not like a do over. It's just a, now I'm like taking everything in and soaking everything in. Uh, cause, cause I, I know how fast it goes, how fleeting it is. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't need to jump out of planes anymore or do this and that. I, I'm going to walk my garbage to the end, end of the driveway. Um, and I'm going to come back and hang out with the family. And then, you know, like I want, Sounds I don't want to go too far. Like, <laughs> like watching, it's just funny. Um, and, and that's part of the reason why I also didn't go is uh, because I have the kids and I'm like, yeah. I, I just don't want to leave them. You know, I don't want to go to France, you know, with the babies and I don't know. I'm, I feel, I I'm getting old. <laughs> well, it's just also, it's just our priorities have shifted. Everything's yeah. different now. It's kind of, well, children are our North star. That's my compass and making sure yeah. he's okay. And Kevin's okay. And, and, um, and then have a blast between that. Yeah. And that's what it's all about, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so something I, I watched, uh, um, gosh, what's it called? That show hiking with Kevin or something like that. Something oh. weird. Yeah, yeah, that we, it's that weird <laughs> show um, where you you were uh, guys were in Nashville in the smoke or in the Smokies, yeah. and um, so I learned a little bit about you with that. I had I have a couple of things I want to talk about because I am a huge Johnny Cash fan. Oh, um, okay, big time. I love Johnny Cash, and I've done like so many paintings of him and drawings of him, um, and so and also I love Nashville. I love the Smokies. My my wife and I. One of our favorite vacations is in the summertime. We go to the Smoky Mountains and get one of those log cabins. Oh um, my God, it's, it's gorgeous! So the much whole Blackberry fun. Farm area, yeah, Blackberry exactly. Mountain. It's beautiful. Um, and I just love the whole. I have a lot of friends that are in in bands in Nashville, and now a few comics that are you know at the Zanies there and everything. So I really I love that. I love to visit that place. Um, but you grew up there, and you you were, you know, you you said something about how you. <laughs> kind of just would end up hanging out at Johnny Cash's house or yeah. Jimmy Carter's house or whatever. Yeah. That's this is crazy okay. to me. <laughs> so the tw so yeah. And, and so the 2022 Nashville is completely different from the eighties and seventies when I grew up there. So I was yeah. born and raised there. Yeah. So it was really normal to go out to dinner and see Barbara Mandrell sitting there at red lobster and see, uh, I mean, you name it, Sylvia, you would see Merle Haggard, mm. you would see the whole group. Um, it was just a tiny, sweet, charming, folksy little city that yeah. I grew up in. So I knew when I was really young, like 10 or 11, I wanted to act cut to my mom would allow me to go on these auditions where I'd get paid $25 and somebody's album, you know, for being, I couldn't sing, but I could be a tween lip syncer. So I'd bop mm. around in the background and smile and they put a big gold <laughs> bow in my hair, you know? Yeah. So I auditioned for this Johnny Cash Christmas special. I was probably 12 um, got it. And it was really his son that was in it. And I was one of the tweens in the background bopping around. So actually I have a photo. I can't believe this because I was referencing this the other day. So here's me, um, and, with oh, yeah. Johnny's son. Actually, we could 
Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. That's his son, John Carter. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. And that was us. And then my mom came to set and Johnny came to watch his son shoot the video. And here's Johnny, right? Oh, oh let's get it right. Hold on. Okay. So you can see him right oh, there. there. That's awesome. Right there. There he is. And there's me with the other girls. So I'm with the gold bow talking to Johnny Cash. Um, oh my gosh. So what happened? That's amazing. We, it was, it was amazing. He was just very dear and sweet. And he asked me on set, he said, Susie, um, I can't do his voice, but you know, Johnny Cash, Kevin, well, well, there you go. There you go. See a train of common. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Uh, yeah. I walked the line. That's amazing. my name's Sue. So anyway, he, he asked me on set, um, Johnny Cash said, do you sing? And I said, oh no, no. And I could see his eyes twinkle. And he said, you should come over then you could, you should come over and play with my son. So after we <laughs> rapped, I would go over and, and have play dates at their house. And I think what I learned is not having talent can work for you in life because he knew I never wanted to be a singer. I was not going to try to give him my tape. My parents were not in, in yeah, show you weren't business there to like get no! something from him. You just were genuine, you know, genuinely wanted yeah. to be an actress. And I knew singing wasn't my lane and I was just so happy to do it. And my parents were not these stage parents because they had their own careers that had nothing to do with show business. So he really, I, I say this humbly, they liked having me over because I was not going to ask for one thing, which I never did. So we would play hide and go seek at his house, John Carter and I, and um, I just remember being in June Carter's bathroom, which was all red velvet and hiding oh underneath gosh. her vanity. And John Carter was looking for me and then going out into the living room and Mr. Cash um, was on this upside down machine. Do you remember those things you would lay on? It would flip you upside down. Kind of, oh yeah. I don't know what it's called recumbent or just be upside <laughs> yeah. down. Right. And I remember coming <laughs> oh into the living room and meeting, seeing him there and, and turning my head sort of upside down and saying, Mr. Cash, it's nice to see you. Hi, it's Susie. Cause I, Oh, Susie, how are you? But it was just a really fun time. And wow. And his mom, June, loved captain d's fish platter i remember and she didn't want to go in because people would recognize her so we'd um her son and i would go in the cadillac and sit in the parking lot and she would give me money and i'd run in and get her her fish platter and hush puppies and bring it to the car for her oh so gosh. she wouldn't be recognized but they were so kind to me and it was just so normal i didn't know i mean it was here here's my family I had nothing to do with country music i couldn't sing and i'm smack dab in nashville um, which is kind of, <laughs> there's the irony, right? I'm yeah. surrounded by all these legends that sing. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was a great, great part of my childhood was working in that business. That's amazing. I just, I can't, I I'm picturing him hanging upside down. Cause he's a big yeah. guy too. He's a big like guy. Hanging there. And was there, was there ever music playing like doom, ticka, doom, ticka, doom, ticka, doom, ticka, doom, in my <laughs> head, there was a soundtrack. <laughs> I see the trainer coming. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I it see was, Susie coming, <laughs> coming around the bend. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh. Yeah. And he looked to me just, he was so dashing and handsome. It was kind of a Batman superhero character to yeah, see him. He's like bigger um, than life kind of a guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And, but just really, really sweet. And one thing I've always told my son is, well, obviously we always tell our kids don't lie, but really when you say, this is what my thing is in life, this is my jam, this is what I love doing. Mm -hmm. And if someone says to me, do you do this? And just being honest, say, no, it's not for me. That can really open doors for you. Yeah. To just speak your truth and say what is right and what, what you do. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. Cause I think if I had said, oh yeah, I want to be a singer. Oh, you should listen to me sing. It would have, it would have been such a turnoff. Oh yeah, for sure. That's one of the, that's so, such an awkward thing when like, I, I mean, that, that reminds me of Kirby Enthusiasm. Like how many different things in that show are awkward and uncomfortable because um, a character doesn't want to tell the truth about something. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's, it's like, always the cover up, right? It's yeah. the cover up. And you just made it so much worse than it ever had needed to be. Yeah. That's so funny. So was that how you first, was that, was that your first start in getting into acting? Was Yeah, that, that I, would, I would say that. I mean, I just loved it. I mean, I was... 10 years old, 11 years old, you know, they, they would pay me like 75 bucks, a hundred bucks. I would just do these, these, um, little things. I thought it was a blast. It was joyful, little local commercials in Nashville. And it really wet my whistle. And then, um, at 18, I played to college, mostly Los Angeles schools and ended up going to, um, film school at USC. 
um, and sort of followed that, that lane, that path. So you just, yeah. And that's, I mean, I find this for me anyways, in, in with anything having to do with the arts, even with now that I'm, I've been doing comedy for three years now, it, I, I find all these like similarities to drawing and painting and art and just being just creative, anything, basically, like what, yeah. whether it's writing, whatever that I, I feel like if you're passionate about it and you, you, you believe in yourself and you work hard at it, doors open and it, you just have to go through those doors. You know, don't like, I, I kind of have like this, don't say no, just like go, if something happens, yes, do it, go for yes, it. And, and mm -hmm. let, you know, so is, did you find that within acting? Like, I mean, I'm sure from everything I hear, especially like Hollywood type stories is that it's so rough. It's so difficult. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, you basically, yeah, I'm an actor, but no, really I work in a restaurant <laughs> for yeah. years and years and years. But did you find it um, that way where, you know, you just you take on something and then just one leads to the next and you just keep going for it. Yeah. Or being in it, that zone. of yeah. just absolute. I mean, I really focus so much, not on what that world needs out there. I'm not going, Oh, where are the pockets in the world? I am focusing always on what lights me up. Because if I'm alive and excited and joyful, then yeah. I can show up and give that. And that's, that's interesting to me is everybody doing like you doing your comedy and you doing your paintings that is thrilling to the world and you're giving that to the world. So I've always focused on what lights me up. And, and I did, I, when I graduated from college, I had this moment where I go, okay, am I really an actor, because I would go see Shakespearean plays. I go, you know what? That doesn't seem like it's for me. I don't know if I am back pentameters for me. I'm this, I don't know. Then I went to the groundlings and I had a huge wake up call, which the groundlings is an improv similar to second city in yeah. Los Angeles. And I went to see a show and I kid you not, my head exploded and almost fell off my neck and rolled out the door because I saw on stage people doing parodies and doing sketches and making fun of Shakespeare plays and making fun of Tennessee Williams and doing parody. And I go, Oh my God, this is for me. These goofballs, these maniacs are for me. And, um, the week I graduated from college, I signed up for a groundlings class and then ended up staying there for years. And I still go back constantly and do shows and take classes. And I'm, you know, when, uh, when I had our, uh, our son, two of the Groundlings people were there at the hospital with me. I mean, that has been my tribe. That's been my yeah. family. The, I love the way that uh, the Groundlings people, improv people see the world. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been a lifesaver, really. Yeah, it seems like mm -hmm. once you open certain, um, I guess, doors creatively, and you're, like you can't turn them off. Like like I was talking with Kevin about this with his his art, his caricatures is that like he was telling me that he can't stop seeing people this way now. And it's like, yes, that's oh. what happens. You, once you, once you open that, uh, I said, and I told him, I said, I've been, this is what my brain's been like since I was like 10. Like I, really? I can't see people without being like, Oh, <laughs> like, do, you, do people jump out at you of who you need to draw? So let's say there's 20 people in a restaurant. You'll see the one. Do you, it's not, it no, no, it's you? everybody. It's oh. everybody. It's like, like, okay. Here's one that's thing fascinating that's fascinating to me. If, if you, I tell students this all the time, like if you're having a hard time trying to, to capture the likeness of somebody, um, open up a picture of somebody else of two different people and put, eat, put that face on a, a face on each side of the person you're having a hard time with and just look back and forth at all the faces and instantly they're, it's almost like they're, when you look back and forth, their face is like changing and almost like throbbing because you, you'll notice him in immediately. Oh, this guy's nose is way bigger than this this girl's nose compared to this guy's chin. Compared, and like you, all of a sudden, it's like it becomes like a funhouse mirror. Um, so when you're on a bus or or on on, on the subway or something, it's it's almost worse when there's tons of people because it's like a it's overwhelming. Um, sometimes we're just like ah, oh, <laughs> too much. This, this fascinates me <laughs> beyond belief. This yeah. is so interesting to me. That is, that is because if I'm on a bus with a lot of people, <laughs> I will leave the bus and start doing their accent or do their <laughs> quality, their quirk, if they're smacking gum or they can't stop talking about Lake Michigan. Like I'll find that one quirk yeah, um, and speak it because yeah. I can't draw and I can't sing it. So I'll, I'll do it. But that's so interesting that you see the world that way. I'll, 
so many times I'll be with Kevin and people go, gosh, he's really quiet. You know, he didn't, he didn't say much. And, uh, and I go, well, he's, he's just listening. And then about a half hour yeah. later, I'll see him in his office drawing that person <laughs> 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 or playing the banjo and writing a song he, he wrote about them. So he's, yeah, he's always listening and watching. And, yeah. And that's the thing yeah. is like, like I, you know, I'm constantly, you know, it's funny. I was going to ask you because my my wife is is awesome. She's very supportive, um, but she's not a hundred percent on the on the whole comedy thing. She's kind of like, "Are you still seriously doing this thing?" Like, and you know, <laughs> it's like she, she's still supportive, but she's kind of like, uh, she's. Like, so I had a, I had a bunch of people over for a Christmas um, ugly Christmas sweater party. Oh, and, that sounds fun! And, um, I think I have. I'm wearing one now. So, you. <laughs> and um, I invited a bunch of my comic friends, and uh, they were like blown away because they're like, "We never get invited to stuff like this." I'm like, "Wow!" So they came, and of course, my wife wanting to get them to do like some of their bits, and I'm like, "Don't you don't know? You don't ask a comic not at a party." It's like, yeah. um, but they they gave in and they did a couple things, and then she was like, "I just wanted to know because I don't think Jason's funny at all." And uh, I'm just trying to figure out like, what's, you know, and she's like, you guys are, you guys are fu actually funny. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Um, but the, I, I noticed that, that, that what it really is, is that because she's my wife and she sees me all the time, um, you know, a prophet, and adores you. a prophet's not welcome in his own town. Okay. You know, <laughs> um, that's Can you please monogram that and put that at yeah. your front door? Yeah. Yeah. Good and I, I think that she's so used to like me being me all the time that it's not funny to her. But when I'm just because when I do stand up, I'm just doing me basically. Um, but I am the kind of person like even, same thing with the caricature stuff. I don't I, it doesn't turn off like it, even I was doing comedy before I was doing comedy and I just didn't realize it basically. Right. And like one of the things that um, that's, this is what I wanted to ask you about you and Kevin's relationship with when it comes, cause you're both um, into comedy and mm -hmm. acting and different things. So there's a lot more you, that you understand, but I wonder yeah. if, if you're like, I don't think Kevin's very funny. <laughs> if you ever like that, cause you got that wife part, you're there or like, because like, for example, my wife, she, she gets nervous because I tend to say what's on my mind all the time. And sometimes I don't realize it. And sometimes I don't realize that I'm saying it as loud as I'm saying it. And she, or, or she, even if I'm saying it like not, not that loud to her, it sounds like I'm talking this loud. You know, like when I say, it's not like I have a bomb on me when I'm at the airport. Um, she's like, like don't, don't say bomb, you know? <laughs> And, and she'll tell everybody that I was yelling bomb, but I was like, I, I get randomly selected because I got a lot of tattoos and I'm like, Oh, they randomly selected me again. And I told her, I'm like, it's not like I have a bomb. I mean, what, what do you think I have a bomb? And she's like, you don't, you don't say bomb. You know, she's freaking out. So she's worried. I think, I think that's part of it. She's just like, I don't know what he's going to say, you know, mm -hmm. so maybe that's why, but I'm curious about your guys is um, that, that kind of uh because you're both into the comedy. Yeah. I know that when Kevin and I went to dinner with my wife, we all just, we're just giggling the whole entire time. And I'm like, I don't know how you cannot hang out with him and not be giggling the whole time. So I've been giggling <laughs> for 20 years. Yeah. 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 I, the thing with him, I mean, uh, he'll go, you know, hours without speaking because he'll be in his office drawing. Yeah. And that's his passion loves drawing and then he'll come in my office sit down and say one thing and I fall down out of my chair <laughs> I, I just he'll say one sentence and then that's it I'm gone you know he said the other night in bed hadn't hadn't been talking he was reading something for a half hour I was reading and I said how would you describe this person um that he had seen and I he said oh you know like a billy goat and just, it just killed me. It was just, it was a Billy, just the fact that he saw this person yeah. as a Billy goat yeah. description and that was it. And I, I lost it. So That's um, hilarious. yeah, he's, he's it, it, to circle back to your point about comedians and comics. I I've seen the whole spectrum. I've seen the ones that are always on, they cannot stop telling jokes. Mm -hmm. And then the ones that are so quiet 
and cerebral that you would never know they were in comedy. And it all works. All of it, all of that umbrella can be successful. All of it. It just is, it's just different. Because no one's turning their turning it off. It's just it's just how they perceive it. And right. And and I guess that's my point. I wanted about you and your acting and like the improv stuff. Do you feel like like you're saying that you you can't go somewhere without, you know, like smacking your your mouth, like mimicking how they were chewing gum, whatever. (laughs) So that doesn't really turn off for you either. Ever. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's I mean, just before here, I was dashing into take Gable to his little tennis lesson and I saw some of the tennis coaches there and they had like really short shorts on. And I just started laughing Like those 70 (laughs) short shorts that have a stripe on the side, a couple of them, not my son's coach, but a couple of people walking around with those. And I just on the way home already start, started seeing a scene where it's tennis coaches and they're all talking during COVID and they're, you know, it's something there with the, that whole world of, um, so yeah, I see worlds and I see characters and I can't help it and I can't turn it off. And so I accept that about myself. It's just <laughs> always going to be that way. But what's different with Kevin, I is that his lane is with the drawing and stand up. Yeah. And there's no part of me that could ever do stand up. I it's I I love the team playerness of being on stage and doing improv with seven people on stage. Mm-hmm. So for me to stand up by myself on stage. I bow at your feet. You, you guys who do that, you women who do that, everybody who does that, that's just, that would be terrifying for me. I need to have that partnership on, on stage. And that's really the difference. I think with stand up is you're by yourself and then improv, there's a team. And if I'm falling and I did not agree, I said, didn't say yes. And, and I put ourselves in Bangladesh when, when the scene was really in England, my partner's going to help me out and get me back on track. Yeah, Yeah. I love that support. That's funny. I, I did improv when I was in high school. I was on an improv team. So it was a long time. I loved it. It was amazing. But it was that was the one thing I liked about it was like you um, if you screwed something up there, they were there to like change it and help along. I mean, th- this is really ridiculous, but I got to tell you this. Um, my dad is a, is a really silly guy. Um, he's a really talented artist um, and musician, but he is also he's very weird Mm -hmm. (laughs) and 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 when i was in high school he uh i don't know if he made this up but he said you know you should try you should try putting a piece um of like turkey meat or bologna or something in in your shoe so when you're doing when you're on stage you just feel weird and (laughs) and 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 then and so i did it I, I, I don't, I, I don't know why I just thought, Oh, that, that might, that's kind of an interesting idea. And so I remember um, going on stage and I'm carrying this tray full of food around. I'm supposed to be like passing, you know, carrots and stuff. And I was so weird. It was, it, I was just like being extra weird. And then I accidentally started choking on a carrot. Um, and, and then everyone had to come and play and like, you know, act like, you know, this was, this was supposed to happen, but I was really choking for real. Oh no. Um, <laughs> But it was all because I was being, I was, I just felt so strange and I was moving weird. And I, uh, I don't know. It's just a funny memory to think of. Um, but that whole, that whole kind of um, situation that you get put in when, in the, with, you know, with a group like that adds so much to the, uh, I don't even know how, I mean, you know it's what so I'm talking about. So much flavor like, and so much like, texture and crackle and sparkle they're to there have to, everybody. Yeah. They're not, they're not there to punch down. They're going to punch up. And like, so yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it was a long time ago, but I miss it. <laughs> it oh, was fun. fun. I'm yeah. sure you could, there's an improv group near you. There's even no. ones on zoom. I mean, I was doing, no, there is, there classes is on zoom, some around so. here, but um, I just don't have the time. I'm, I'm, I You're got, a busy time yeah. magazine cover artist, Jason. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes you don't need to put baloney in your sock. Yeah. Sometimes I just put baloney in just right, <laughs> right now. I have baloney in my shoes. Um, Somebody told me that they were saying, if you want to kind of start the year, tee it up and be different is take your fingers and scoop an avocado out with your hand rather than a a spoon, just to Mm. have a different experience or eat at different (laughs) restaurants and order different things. Yeah. Best to kind of shake up your chemicals and feel alive. And I think that's that's cool. Yeah. I think it's good. Uh, You know, I was going to say like when you're you're talking about being terrified with the standup, um, it's weird. Cause like 
every single time I do it, just before I get on stage, I start to feel, I, I start to kind of get a stomach ache. Yeah. I start to feel nervous. And like, sometimes I'm like, why am I doing this? I don't, I don't know what, like, I don't really want to do this. Sometimes even while I'm driving there, I'm like, oh, what am I doing? I'm like, cause it's weird. It's like, I'm, I'm alone. You're alone when you do stand up. you know, I'm starting to make a bunch of comic friends. So we got, I got buddies there that we can hang out with and, and we uh, give each other, you know, you know, support and, and talk about our bits and stuff like that. But, but still you're, dr- you're driving at night by yourself to go to some club to get up in front of people and just, <laughs> and, and so I started to feel nervous. Like, why am I doing this? And then as soon as they call me on stage, all of a sudden I'm a different person. Mm-hmm. Like it just changes. And I'm like, Oh, I'm supposed to be here doing this. Like this feels great. And that I'm, immediately I don't feel sick or nervous anymore. Um, but for you, I was, uh, I'm curious about like, so with the, I'm improv- always terrified. I'm uh, just so you know, I, and I love that you shared that because I, and I tell our son that you're nervous because you care. Yeah, that's it. That's you care. How cool that you care about something <laughs> that much. That yeah. You love it that your body is shutting down and freaking out and going, oh my God. I mean, I still, I'll, I'll fire up the computer and do an improv class. Um, a beginning improv class. I'll just hop in on zoom, you know, during the pandemic and I can feel myself sweating. Yeah. Like, oh my God. What if I have no characters? What if I, what if I have nothing to say? What if I completely forget that how this is done? I feel that way about auditions. I don't know that it's ever an easy game for me. But, yeah. That's what I was going to ask is like, when it comes to acting, like when you have a mm-hmm. role, is it, it's the same kind of thing. I mean, I, I don't really know what that world's like, but I mean, kind of imagine you, you do several takes and you practice and and yeah I mean the the high one of the highlights for me was being in the Christopher Guest movie because I've been a lifelong fan I actually wrote a paper about Spinal Tap when I was in college because I just could not love his work more oh yeah so when the part came up for mascots and I was was chosen and so grateful and the first day of shooting and I'm with Parker Posey at a building that's made to look like an airport in downtown LA and 75 extras are behind me and it's all improv. And it's the first scene out of the gate. Oh my God. I was just like, please Lord (laughs) (laughs) talk through me here. Cause I'm with these pros and Chris was, he was so nice. Cause he just said, we can run film as long as you want and no worries. And I, I will find the funny and I will edit and so just relax and you sit with Parker and you guys just talk in character. So he made it so warm and fuzzy, but I still remember going, okay, okay, here we go. This was my dream. And it was yeah. my dream and it, and I loved it, but it also is terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> it's jumping out of an airplane for me. That's the equivalent. It was, so, but when the scene was over and we, we found moments together that, that were shared and delightful and connected and, I was so happy and I thought, oh, nothing will ever beat this. This is this in childbirth. Yeah. I loved pushing a baby in the world and I loved doing this <laughs> for guest movie. That two highlights. Um, so <laughs> that's funny. Um, so when, okay. So when you're on that scene, is there, you said that it's, is it all improv? I mean, is there any kind mm-hmm. of like, like, is there any kind of direction? Like, this is where I want this scene to end up. Like, there, like you kind of got to just get to this place. Is that? Yeah. Like- so that's a great question. So that that's all improv. So for example, when I did curb, I played a flight attendant and I was given the following. You're a flight attendant, just little bullet points. Larry is sitting in an exit row. He does not want to abide by exit row procedure. Go. Hmm. So that's basically how the scene's going to be. Oh. He doesn't want to abide by exit row procedure. He's sitting in an exit row. Um, so there you go. So and you have those, to decide what kind of flight attendant you're going to be. All of that, like all of that pleasant, but also not <laughs> too much going on where I'm trying to be, be nuts and crazy. And, and, and it's yeah. about, it's about Larry. It's about being a pleasant flight attendant. It's about, sir, do you know the rules? Do you know the exit pro exit row procedure? <laughs> Would you like a Merlot? You know, really uh, trying to hit that. Um, that of course I was nervous for too. I don't know that I'm ever not nervous, except maybe when I'm sleeping, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it, but it makes me feel alive. You know, it makes, it's exciting. I mean, it's, it's always exciting. And that's why I chose this career. It really lights me up. And, and maybe that's the reason I don't feel the need to ski or 
bungee jump because I feel you've got enough this, like oh, yeah enough like shaking my chemicals up. It's funny I've um, had a few people um, try to get me into smoking weed in my lifetime, and I'm not really into it. And I'm and I've I've tried it a few times, but I never I don't really I can't get high. I don't know for some reason I just can't. Um, it doesn't really seem to work for me. And I've got this buddy who's, he's convinced he's like, dude, it's because you're high all the time. Like your, your Ooh. mind is constantly like, you know, so like you're not feeling the buzz cause you're already there. And I'm like, I wonder wow. if that's, if that, if that, cause I, I, I don't have no interest in it. Um, uh, and people are always like, Hey, you want to, you want something? I'm like, nah, it doesn't even do anything. I don't care. I'm not into it. Um, but, but it's weird. I wonder if, if that's like, you know, wow, that's with, really, that's really interesting. Cause you're, if you're in this zone where you're feeling excited and elated and blissed out, why I'm, I'm pretty to... chill, like uh -huh. person all the time, even though, you know, I, I like to talk a lot, but other than that, I'm pretty, I'm a pretty laid back person. Um, yeah. so <laughs> the only thing that I've ever experienced is I just feel like, I just feel sleepy. I just want to go to bed. If I, you know, if I've had some, some weed, I'm just like, I just want to go to bed. Do you drink at all? Uh, I drink wine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just interesting. But I was, I was just thinking like, I wonder if, if that's, if that's a similar thing to other creative people, but then again, there are so many artsy artsy type of people I know that are, they're high all the time. So yeah, <laughs> that's just again, the thing. it's like different strokes. Everybody's got yeah. their thing, you know, I mean, I think it's hard to be spinning on the planet right now. It's real wicked hard, especially yeah. pa parenting and oh, wife, yeah. wifing and working and all, it, all the balls in the air and getting masks and getting COVID tests and getting this and oops, somebody's got it. Oop, we got to do this. Ooh, we got to do this. It's a lot, you know, oh. right now it's a lot. So I just go, we got to be real tender with ourselves, real gentle. Yeah. Um, no, and whatever I, it takes to get through, honestly. Been, I mean, I, I like Ativan. Sometimes I take, you know, that's a flying for flying, a flying drug. Mm. If you have a bumpy flight, it just takes, takes the, the edge, edge off. off. Yeah. But yeah. not in a pot way. It's more of just the volume goes down a little bit. Yeah. Everybody's a little nicer. Just relax. Yeah, like, I like to have a glass of wine at the end of the night and just be like, yeah, oh, yeah. I deserve this right now. Drop but your like, shoulders. We, we've had like, so this was, like, I was going to tell you at the beginning. Um, so we went to visit my family in North Wisconsin, had a great time, came back. I got super sick and I thought I had COVID because oh, I'm sorry. I was like, it, you know, just, you know, the chills and the headache and I didn't have a fever or anything, but just did not. I just felt terrible coughing and all that kind of stuff. I went, and got tested, no COVID, nothing, no, nothing came back. So I just, had soup rested whatever else but then my little girls both got sick so obviously they got whatever i had um and that's the worst like when you when you have like oh. a little toddler and a little baby and last night this is this is this is why i didn't want to start the podcast out this way but last night at around one or so in the morning my wife comes running wakes me up my four-year-old is is going <gasps> like can't breathe and it was like so oh freaky. Oh my god! I'm so I'm like sorry. holding her, and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm so like, sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, you got, you got to focus. Listen to daddy. I want you just to breathe, please breathe. And she's like, started going like this, and her, her mom's getting her shoes and everything. Um, and I had to stay home with the baby, and she's gonna run her to the emergency room. And so she ran her to the emergency, and I'm just sitting there at home, like Jason, freaking I'm out. I'm so sorry. So this is what the last night was like. Oh my god! And um, she didn't get back until six in the morning, um, today, um, and it turned out what she had was croup. Um, the croup. Yeah. And where you sound like a a seal. It's, it's yeah. That, uh, yeah. 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 I remember G oh. Abel had that. We took him to the emergency room when he was about one, and it yeah. was terrifying. Oh, it's, it, it, it's it was so like oh my gosh. It's it yeah the sound is yeah so scary it's the croup and, and then, it came out of nowhere like she was fine yeah. and then all of a sudden psh. so that was that was crazy she seems to be doing well now but they told us like you just because it's it's i mean i live in illinois so it's freezing here right now we got a lot of snow it, but and my wife noticed as soon as she got her outside to put her into the the car uh she started the breathing started getting better yeah they, they say said get them outside the cold get them out air that yep. does it um but gosh ugh. 
<laughs> I remember. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, a creepy it, night. I'm, I'm sorry you went through that. And also you have the landscape now of COVID going on. So you're probably yeah. thinking, oh my God, is this a, yeah, a like, lo- something in the lungs? Is it COVID? Is it because when Gable had it, you know, when he was a baby 14 years ago, 15 years ago, they said, get him outside. We were down at the beach, get him outside in the cold air. I remember three in the morning, walking up and down the pier, holding this baby, go, yeah. just breathe in the air, breathe in the cold air. Cause that just really relaxes the lungs Yeah, and let, allows them to open. But man, parenting is freaking terrifying. Isn't it? <laughs> it's freaking the- scary. Yeah. It's, it's a, I, I'm, I'm, I was a pretty good kid. You know, I, I wasn't like a, a nightmare kid to my parents, but it does, you know, I do look back and think, oh, there was that time that I was a certain way. I'm like, oh, I'll call my mom and be like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was like, that was not cool that I, you know. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's, it's definitely, um, it's weird to think too. Like I've been a parent for almost 20 years. Oh my that's, God. That's weird. Because <laughs> I don't, that's it doesn't amazing. seem like. It. Especially where it's because you're 28. So it's really weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was a crazy kid. Uh, me and the ladies, you know. Um, no, I, I, I was 26 when, I, when my first daughter was born. Oh, you were young. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, yeah. yeah I remember like, uh, um, I had a, I had a freak out moment that the night her mom went into labor. Um, she, she didn't know if it was like false labor or not, so she got into a hot tub, and her, you know, they say if, if you get if the contractions go away, it's not the real labor, you know, like, but if you're in a hot tub and the contractions don't stop, it's, it's, it's going to happen soon. So she had her friend come and hang out with her while she was in the tub. And I, that's when I did my first painting oh! because I was, do you freaking, still have it? Yeah. It's a, I did a, a painting of Owen Wilson, a watercolor. Painting. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is what a great story behind that painting. Cause I was freaking out and I don't know why it took the entire pregnancy, but the very end for me to be like, what am I going to do? What, like, cause I, I was trying to make it as an illustrator, but I was only doing like pen and ink and color pencil. And, and all of a sudden I had this like anxiety attack of you're not a real artist. You're, you're a hack. You're a joke. You're, you're not going to be a real artist unless you, you, you learn how to paint and you can paint all these guys out there that are killing it, that are making it as the biggest illustrators. They all know how to paint and you can't paint. And <gasps> so you, you need to either start to learn how to paint or you need to get a real job right now. So I'm doing all that while she's in the bathroom and I got out paints and I just, she came out and she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm painting, <laughs> I'm painting. And uh-huh. I never stopped. Um, the next day she went into labor that night, my daughter was born the next day or the, the, I think it was two days later, we came back and I did a painting of 50 cent. That was my next. Painting. Oh, cool. <laughs> so I just oh like didn't God. stop. That's interesting. You have a voice in your head that tells you you're a fraud. That's yeah. so, I know that voice, just like, what are you doing? They're going to fight. Everyone's going to find out. Yeah. You know, that whole, <laughs> I think that's so common, right? Yeah. For people don't think that. I still, I feel that way. With, I mean, like it's, it's, it's cool. Um, having become friends with Kevin because we, we have so many things in common with the, the, the caricature and the drawing and then with the comedy and he's like super experienced and successful with the comedy. And so it's, it's interesting to be able to bounce things off and be like, you know, like, like I told him, like, I feel scared sometimes. And he's like, that's normal. <laughs> you know, that's good. You know, just like what you said. Um, but like, like in another thing, like what you said, which I thought was really important is that it's important you, that you care. It's like, you have to care about, you know, you know, whether it's writing or whatever, but it's also, I think the, one of the things about art that keeps me going is that it's, it's like, I think that failure is, is the key to success because like you, uh-huh. you if you and what's scary about it is you have to be vulnerable you have to put yourself out there if you don't you're never going to know you right. know but it's it doesn't seem to ever get better <laughs> no it, it doesn't and i mean the actor odds are are these are just the science and stats on it is that you'll audition 50 times for the one job you'll get mm. so you're going to have 49 oh. no's in a row and then you'll have one out of 50 jobs and you'll how get. much do you so, that's gotta, yeah. you gotta feel like I'm a, I'm terrible. Like, yeah. 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 I mean, but that's what I, I say to our son is like, your parents are con- we're constantly rejected, nonstop rejected. But I have a little Pollyanna <laughs> in me that's just like, oh, great. Okay. That's number 23. That's going to get me my next one. 
Yeah. And, and I'm one step closer to the yes. I'm one step. And I just, that's how I pull myself up from my bootstraps and just keep going. Yeah. Um, and, and trusting that the job that's right for you will. will exactly. I always tell myself now I know how not to do this thing. Like, so I, I, yeah. I'll, I'll take like, for example, like if, if I'm, if I'm on stage and like, I've never really bombed, but like, there are certain things that didn't work. And I know some comics will be like beating themselves up and like, Oh, I, I did terrible, whatever. I kind of feel more like, well, that one just didn't work, you know, but that's healthy. Now, now I know how not to do that. I got, I know there's something there. So I gotta go back and figure it out. I'm going to, and, and then the next time I can't wait to try it again. And then oh, it still didn't quite work, but you know, we'll come back. And the same thing with drawing, like, you know um, it's happened with, you know, you try something new or push something, or maybe um, something that you feel excited about, like pushing a palette of, diff of a different colors or whatever. And then you're excited about it and you send to the art director and he's like, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> mm. That's like, that's, that's not what we, we didn't hire you for this. We hired you because of this kind of work that you do. And you're like, oh, I guess maybe I, I shouldn't be experimenting on this job, but as an artist, you can't help it. Sometimes you want to like, can't help it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I'm not a cookie cutter, you know, uh, do the same. It's not a factory, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. Do you think I mean, being on the cover of time is such an accolade? It's, it's incredible. Is there any thing that could happen in your artistic career? Cause in my opinion, you're the best of the best. Is there oh, something that would quiet that critic down for you? If X happened, do you know what that thing is that you would then go, Oh, okay. I believe I'm good enough i believe mm. this is i'm worthy to be in this i world. don't i don't think so i mean i mean i feel confident with my art like like i'm not i'm not i don't ever feel like oh i can't do this um but i don't always like i hardly ever like anything i do that's what yeah that, See, that's, that's, that's that I don't that's I have to say I want to throw my computer at you right now I can't believe that <laughs> I can't believe that because Kevin and I saw your time magazine we were jumping up and down oh we were by the way you guys left that message you left was like made my day it was a really nice message it was awesome we were if it, anybody please go to Jason's site and look at his time magazine cover of our <laughs> our president and our vice president right now that is first of all everybody thinks it's a photograph they're like that's a photograph yeah the which, fact that you I think it's weird. You drew it out of thin air. <laughs> what the crank? Like who? <laughs> you should see my stick figures. I mean, I, I, it is mind boggling. Well, I, I will, I will say this though. That particular piece, I am very happy with, and it did turn out exactly how I wanted. So I actually do like that one. Um, but there are pieces I've, I've done where it's just like, uh, you know, or things that bother me. You know, like it didn't. Like I wanted to. Uh, let's see. Um, well, there, there's another time cover I did with uh, Trump and Pelosi, and it's like a caricature cover, and they're like shooting, like she's she's got like a um, like a slingshot or or not a slingshot. She got I can't even think of what it's called, a medieval. What do you call those <laughs> things that you put rocks in and it flings? Oh, uh, um, well, you're saying slingshot jousting? Am I no? Uh, it's not the luge. It's, it's not a tennis racket. It's it's one uh, of those things with the back yeah. and yeah, I know it what goes, you're talking about. <laughs> it's in and, Robin Hood. Robin yeah, Hood and, and they all say, run away, run away. <laughs> um, anyways, she's shooting one of those and Trump's shooting a like, you know, like a slingshot. And so it's like, and he's shooting tweets at her. So they're like little tweet birds. And um, I was so excited because I was like, oh, I'm going to, this is going to be really cool because they're going to see it. That's, that's what really exciting is, you know, Trump's going to see it. You know, Pelosi's going to see it. What cover it, was it? What magazine? For time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hello. So, you know, they're going to see it. And I, I had all these ideas of how I wanted to finish it off. And the, the tweets I wanted that, you know, like angry birds, you yeah. know, I wanted to make the tweets like all individual, like little funny, little angry tweet birds. And like, you know, but as, as I'm working on it, I only have a few days to do it. I realize there's no way I'm going to have the time to do what I want to do with this because I, st I have to paint the characters and the bricks and all these different things. And then I, but I, I was like saving a certain amount of time for me to do the tweets. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I have like an hour and a half left before it's due. And I haven't done the tweets yet. So I had to like 
just paint them. I basically decided to paint them to, so they look just like tweet birds, like the actual logo, the Twitter thing, the bird, yeah. but then just enough uh, rendering that they have a three dimensional feel to them. Um, Beautiful. But like it was, it was one of those things that it still bums me out that I, that I, you know, the cover went out, it was successful. People like it, time liked it. But I was just like, hmm, because <laughs> I wanted those tweet birds to be like something more like I wanted to, you know, but the thing I've noticed, you know, that I, I've learned with art and especially with these kind of deadlines is you, you do the best you can. And this, I think this is with, probably with acting and everything, but I mean, I don't know with acting. I mean, you, that's on a, something people are going to see that over and over again. You know, that's gotta oh, be something I that, know. I mean, you have to have that same thing, right. Where you're just like, uh, I wish I could oh. change how that. Oh well, God. Like, okay. I was on friends. I feel like I was really wooden, really mm. wooden and not, I mean, it was a small little part, but God, I could have touched Joey's face. I could have stroked his, <laughs> his stubble on his face. Like there's all these things I look back and wow, it could have been so much more alive and interesting instead of just the blonde girl sitting at the coffee shop that I was. Uh, yeah. yeah. I look back at that now as a 50 year old woman, I would have done that so differently because I'm so much more relaxed in my skin now than yeah. when I was 27 and terrified to be on friends. I wrote my lines on sweet and low packets and stuck it in the coffee shop because I was so afraid of forgetting <laughs> my lines. So they were all on equal packets, sweet and low packets, sugar packets, all my yeah. lines. <laughs> um, but I, I am completely with you of just going, Oh, I would do it differently now, but Kev told me something that George Wallace said in Vegas once George Wallace walked off the stage and he looked at Kev and he said, well, that's the show they got. Mm. Yeah. And I get emotional about that. I do because I think that line has saved me a lot of times Yeah, is just walking off, whether it's a parenting thing, a birthday party that went upside down that I threw or God knows a mistake I made in an audition or I failed at this. I just walk off and go, well, that's the show they got. Yeah. I can't go back. I can't change it. And, and sometimes that's a tough pill to swallow, but like, you know, again, like that's, you have to, you have to be able to move. It's always moving forward. And you know, you, you can't, you can't go back. That's why it's funny too. Cause I get the same thing. Um, I've had to change my, like my, my father, my entire life has been telling me how old he is. Okay. I remember when my dad was in his he was early 30. 30s yes. and he would talk, he would be like, you oh just wait. Till he you thought he was old. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because, and then I look back, I'm like, wait a minute. He was 30 when he was saying these, he's like, you just wait till you get older and your, your eyes start to go and this starts to happen. And, and I'm like, and I, I've, I've joked with my parents. I'm like, cause my dad is 67 now. Okay. That's and, really young. Yeah. And, and no, now, now it's like, even more. he's like, Oh, you know, I'm so, I'm so, you know, he's like so old. And I'm like, dad, you're not. So, he's like, you just wait. And it's just funny because I like kind of what you just said, like, that's the show they got. I, I, I think because I grew up with my dad being like that all the time, I was like, I don't want to be like that. I want to embrace who I am, what I am. And I'm a, in my early forties and that's just the way it is. I can't go back. I right. can't, but I'm going to be the best in my forties and whatever. And, and it's like, I, I'm not going to be complaining to my kids about how old I am all the time. Um, although the other day, my four-year-old, um, I was like, I was like wrestling around with her and stuff. And then she goes, Hey, she goes, Hey dad, um, watch this. And then she, she tries to show me that she can do the splits. And, <laughs> and, and she's like, and I was like, Whoa, I, I didn't know she could do that. She goes, um, can you do it? I'm like, no. No, 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 I can't do that. She goes, why? Because you're so old. <laughs> and I was like, no, <laughs> not because I'm so old. That's uh, so funny. Yeah, I'm always trying to reimagine aging in our house because I said to Gable, I said, look, mommy's going to live to be 100. And I just turned 50. I'm just getting started. Yeah. This is like halfway. I'm just getting started. So I put on Run DMC music and Beastie Boys and I'm <laughs> dancing around the house. I'm like, I'm 50. Mommy's young. Mommy's yeah. young. Mommy likes to dance. Mommy's <laughs> young. You know, we just have fun. I got it. We got to we got to blow it up. This whole aging thing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We get we got to have fun. It's not that big of a deal. It's, it's not. You know. Look, here's the alternative to not turn 50 for me. Right. Yeah. Like a lot of people didn't make it to yeah. that age. That's true. So you either hit the age you are for you early forties 
you either hit that age or you didn't make it to that yeah. age. Right. So. Yeah. I, I always look at it. It's, it's every day is like this. It's, it's a gift. You know, it's like, this is, this is, this is it, you know, like, how, you know, that I, I, I always try to have the go for it, always go for it. Um, and, uh, it's, you know, it's funny too. Like when I was, um, before I started doing stand up, I had, I, I had like several different comics that I interviewed on, on the podcast. And I met a few when I went to LA, I went to the comedy store and I hung out with some comics and there was a few comics that I hung out with and I was just talking about comedy and about how, um, you know, I'm thinking about getting, I'm thinking about doing it, you know? And now it's funny looking back. Cause now like after doing it for three years, if, if I hear someone do that, I'm like, Oh, just you either do it or you're not going to do it. But I remember some of the advice that I got was, was, uh, what does it matter? Like, just do do it like because yeah. this, this is this is your life this is the why wouldn't you do it like what what is it even if you fail even if you if you make a fool out of yourself you're alive yes. <laughs> like you're here and you're alive just do it you know like get up and and it, I remember like just thinking like yeah like I mean this is the kind of advice I always tell artists and then I, I realized like you know being a newbie in something else um, it, it kind of like changed my attitude, my thinking about um, comedy is is not something new to me. It's just a branch of my creativity. It's yes. just it's like it's just another part of my creativity. It's not, you know, it's like I've always been silly and goofy and funny. Now I'm just going to like hone in on that aspect, just like I honed in on drawing and everything else, you know? Right. Because you have put so much comedy and infused it in your artwork. Mm -hmm. that this you're right like this is just a different way of infusing your comedy mm -hmm. on stage yeah. rather than on a canvas exactly. oh, guess, who's, guess who's calling me right now hold on, on. Hold on. <laughs> hey babe yeah i'm doing a podcast with jason right now all right okay cool okay you're live <laughs> i love you bye. okay bye okay <laughs> <laughs> that's fine yeah um well uh, I suppose you probably have to go pretty soon because it's been an yes. hour. Um, yes. But I do, first of all, thank you again so much for doing this. This was so much fun just to chill and talk with you. Um, but before we go, there is some fan art that I want to show you. Um, what? Yeah, I have fans okay. do some drawings of you. Um, and let me just I have to share. I put my screen. glasses on. That's really cool. Let me see. Let me know if you see this. If I did this right. Yep. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my god oh that's so good so who did that um this what? one is by mr ponce what mr. the ponce. can you send me these jason can yeah you yeah these? yeah i'll send them to you holy crackers <laughs> oh my god holy they're just crackers. doing that while i'm talking for one hour no 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 no. these i i sent out a message to people like if they want to if they have a question for you or if they want to draw or paint you, um, I gave them a certain amount of time to do it. So where do I Venmo uh, this person? Cause I really <laughs> like how this went turned out. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll send you the info. Okay. So that's so a, oh, that's cool. This is by Paula cool. Petlawani. That's so cool. Yeah. I think wow. hers is like acrylic maybe. I would love your feedback on these because you're the artist. I just, I'm just impressed that anybody owns paper and pens. I think that's cool. <laughs> so this is, oh, this that's is, uh, good. This is by Jacques Lemoni. <laughs> he's a, uh, he's my, wow. uh, he's from France. And uh, I won't give his personal information too much out, but he just told me he got out of a surgery recently. So I think this is the first thing he did when he got out of his surgery. Oh, that's so, <laughs> so dear. That's so good. Yeah. He's really, yeah, cool. really good. Yeah. He's good. Nice. This one. Ah, <laughs> okay. That's me as a Simpsons character. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I love it. Um, this is by Dominic Zeilinger. Mm -hmm. um, I almost think if like, if he made the nose like smaller, you'd look like a character from like Whoville. Absolutely. You know? Like it's a little very teeny. Whoville, <laughs> Dr. Susie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's funny too it's like a, a blonde uh pompadour um so interesting it's, it's funny man um this oh. one is by 
Yeah. Quan Gastelum. He, That's oh, really good. He's a little, little alien. Uh, oh, I think he's got you on uh, roller skates. Yeah, I love roller skating. Yeah. I love those videos incredible. that you would share roller skating around in your house. It's hilarious. Uh, we moved and now there's, there's not the big roller skating. Pl- there's, it's a different layout of this house. So oh. I have to go, I have to go to rink now. Oh, okay. This is so good. Oh my God. And this, this is the last, but this one is pretty Wait, cool. Uh, okay. <laughs> this is by um, Christopher Hersman, by the way. <laughs> I I'm really blown away. I get I'm really I thought that was a photograph. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean it's it's really well done. Here I can zoom in too. Let's let's oh, zoom in. My and to put Kevin's face, that's absolutely yeah, I'll I'll send all these to you. I would love them and I will put them up and cherish them. <laughs> Look at that little <laughs> that little maniac. That's pretty funny. Oh my God. These people are so talented, Jason. Yeah, it's cool. And that it's something I do um, for almost every one of the podcasts and I don't know who's going to submit or what, how many I'm going to get or whatever. So it's always kind of cool. Well, I'm so um, grateful. Just please tell them. Thank you so much. Oh yeah. Well, they're going to wow. watch, they're going to watch this. Okay. So they'll see when, did, when does this air? So I can, um, I probably, I'm going to probably try to have it up um, either tomorrow or a Monday. Okay. Um, just depending on how much time I have to put it together. So, um, but anyways, thanks everybody for uh, submitting the fan art. That's really cool. And, so good. and uh, thank you again for joining me for this. This was like a lot of fun to be able to talk to you. Um, and I still can't believe that you got to hang out with Johnny Cash. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> he like, seriously, like one of my favorite musicians of all time. Um, and uh I, and also, like, I have several, like, muses, I guess, different uh-huh. people that I've obsessively drawn. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Johnny Cash is one of them. George Lucas, Johnny Cash. Um, I've done a lot of George Lucas. I can't get enough of his hair. And, oh, yeah. isn't he wonderful? That face <laughs> is wonderful. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, thank you so much. And before we thank go, Thank you, though, Jason. Is, thank you. Um, there anything you want to, like, let people know? Um, obviously, follow you on Instagram. Yeah, Instagram at... Suki Yagley, S-U-K-I Yagley. Um, coming up, I can't specifically say what it is, but I'm bursting at the seams. I've mm. created a world, a business with two of my girlfriends that in three weeks, we're going to be able to talk about it, what we have created. And I'm thrilled. And uh, I will circle Ooh, back awesome. and let you know about it in about three weeks from now. Awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. Congratulations. That's really awesome. Thank you. Thank so, you. Uh, And uh, to everyone else, be safe, be smart, and uh, we'll see you all next time. All right. Big love.